Well, hello, YouTube. Good morning. Saturday morning. Here in beautiful sunshine in New Mexico. If you guys don't know where New Mexico is, there's Texas and Arizona. There's this huge spot right in the middle. That's New Mexico. Some people are like, wow, you speak really good English from being from Mexico. I'm like, I visit a lot on the East Coast because I got a son that's in the Navy. They'll tell me, hey, you speak really good English for a Mexican. I'm like, <laughs> New Mexican. Anyway, that's just a side note, a little funny. So, anyway, we're going to go pick up a car today. This channel, like it says, is my therapy. All the stuff that I do on here is my therapy. I kind of turned a hobby into a, a business style thing. Make some extra money on the side since about 1992. Raising kids. You know, always got to have something. Make a little bit of extra. So one of the things that I do is I buy cars. Usually junk. Like stuff that you see me working on. And, you know, put some elbow grease and some work into them and fix them up. So, that's what we're on our way to do. We're going to go to this little bitty town called Tularosa, which is about 13 miles north of Alamogordo. If you don't know where Alamogordo is in New Mexico, it's, uh, I think, it look up the White Sands National Monument or the Trinity site where they uh, exploded the uh, atomic bomb. Yep. So if I'm glowing, that's why. Not actually. The line, Another side note. North, anyway, stay tuned. We're on our way to Tularosa. It's about a 20 minute drive. Go pick up a car. I'll show you what we're getting here in a little bit. All right. Bye. We'll be right back. All right, YouTube. We got our treasure. Got a little 2010 Chevy Aveo. Not bad. Looks pretty decent inside. Doesn't smell funky. Little automatic. What you think? Would you fix it? Comes from Iowa. Might have some rust underneath. We'll find out. We'll throw it up on the lift. But for now, we got our little, we got our straps. We're strapped down under our car dolly. Yeah. Back to our little 13 mile trek back to town. See what we got going on with this thing. Oh, got a car coming. I'm gonna stay out of the way of that, huh? A bunch of ants. You guys got ants? Little red and black ones. Boy, they get you. And it stings. Got our tow rig. You saw this in one of the other videos. Yeah, we had our, <laughs> our Nissan Titan hooked to our uh, 94 Chevy to pull out that frame parts. You know, that's our tow pig. This is our workhorse. It's been a good truck. Anyway be updated on what we're going to do with this little thing we got her we're on our way well i'm gonna be back on this little beast here today it's a little dirty she runs though she's a runner you got her running i don't know the last time you guys saw her she was on the, she was on the hook but today what we're going to do is we're going to give her a fresh oil change and do some little testing. Check engine lights on. See what's going on with this. Not in bad shape. Pretty good shape. Interior's not bad. Needs a little cleaning, but it's not totally torn up. I figured out this battery was bad. Not really. It's just too big for the car. So we'll put it over here on the... charger it'll stay good oh it's got a bad battery there look at there sad face bad battery 321 thing's only a year old but i guess that's about how long they last so we got batteries we got batteries we got batteries 
So, we'll put this one on another charger. See what it's gonna do. Got this little charger over at one of the stores here in town. It's called the Bin Store. They get old uh, Amazon returns and things like that. And you can buy them for cheap. Bought it for five bucks. How can you go wrong? It's a pretty good charger. This one says battery's 95%. Charging. I guess we'll see if it gives us an error code or something later. This other one. As soon as this battery charger decides to work. Sometimes I gotta unplug it and plug it back in. Get stuck in a little loop, so you gotta unplug it. Look, it's even unplugged. It's still on. Oh, the capacitor inside there. Probably stays charging for a minute. Wait till that turns off. There we go. Now we can plug her back in. Look at that battery that we're using. This is the one I like to use for the winch. Start charging. There we go. Okay. Back to the car. Got a little few projects in here. So we'll put this one up in the air. Let's start her up first. I'm gonna change the oil, but I want the oil to be a little bit warmer. It's pretty warm here anyway, but better for it to be nice and warm, right? I don't want it to be hot, but. Of course, I don't want it to be cold either. There's our check engine light. See it? It's probably not going to shut off. Uh oh. Now it doesn't want to start. Here we go. Uh oh. We have a weak fuel pump. Sound too bad. Oh, wants to die. Uh-oh. Come on, baby, catch. Nope. She said nope. Let's try it again. <laughs> Smell bad gas. Yep, she don't like that gas. Put a couple gallons in it. Still don't like it though. <laughs> oh, I have to go get the scan tool and do that first, huh? Only has 132,000. Smell the bad gas. Oh. Try number seventeen. Oh, 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 oh. Might stay going up. No. Here's what we did yesterday. I think we have a bad mass airflow sensor. I haven't checked it yet with the scan tool, but let's just try it and see. Come on. Got a little safety clip. 
little safety clip on there. Gotta get that off. And then, pull this off. Now let's see what it's gonna do. Have to get one. Because that's what the problem is. Now it'll start and run, watch. Look at there. Think we got a bad mass airflow sensor? Time will tell, huh? <laughs> got a tire flat, huh? Well, we'll get the scan tool in a minute. First, we want to change the oil. Hold on. I don't want to bore you guys with the oil change procedure. Hopefully you can hear me. I got the AC on, but swamp cooler. You might not know what that is. Down south, we got swamp coolers, but I want to do a little inspection or anything. This thing's from Iowa, so you expect it to have some rusty, crusty, dusty stuff in here, which it probably does. It's got a little oil leaking somewhere. That's our oil filter housing, so that's expected to have some oil, but Way up there, there's some oil leaking. I don't know if you can see that or not. And over here we have our oil sending unit. Got some oil leaking. But, not too bad underneath here. Brakes look decent. Got about more than 50% live. Got some uh, dirt dirt in our tires it's on our cousin my cousin Benny remember dirt in the tires <laughs> not too bad see anything leaking over here yet about 50 percent on those don't see any coolant leaking A little damage there. Somebody hit something, huh? No biggie. A little damage there, but exhaust is intact. It doesn't sound really loud. A little rusty, but nothing too bad. More dirt. Fish. Doesn't sound bad. How about this one? Oh, this doesn't turn as easy. Do I have the brake on? I might have the brake on. 2018 tires, not too old. A little rust right there. Helps if I turn the flashlight around the right way. Rocket panels look good. That one looks a little bad from being lifted wrong or something. Mm -hmm. 2018 tires. Yep. Oh, 2018. Still good. Yeah. Not too bad. Put her down, we'll fill her up with some oil and see what else we can get. Alright. Pour some oil on this beast. Four and a half quarts, I think, is what it takes. Got our five quart bottle here. Hopefully, you can hear me over this wind. It was a little low. It looked like it was newer oil. A little more. Let's try that. Get our dipstick. Where are we at? Right at the minimum. Yep. 
Here's some more. There we go. I don't know about you guys, but I always have so much stuff going on. I'm a little disorganized. How about you guys? I am at. This organizer is okay. Wipe off our dipstick here. Yeah? Trying to do this one hand. Nice to have you guys on YouTube. Doing this with one hand is a little bit difficult. I understand that. Now we are at. I think we're full. All right. Top back on it. Uh oh, can't read it that way. Better go the other way. There we go. Now, I always like to clean it off because then I know that I was in there. See, I know there's a clean spot. All right, I'm going to plug this back in. We're going to hit it with our scan tool next. So, I want that to be working. Alright, let's go in here and get our scan tool. Let's see where our scan tool plugs in. OBD2 port underneath here somewhere. Oh, there it is, I felt it. Okay. Oh, light turned on, see the glowing green? Yep, so it's on. Now, let's turn our key on. Turn on our scan tool. There we go. Uh-oh. Scan tool dead. We'll be back. Okay. Lucky for us. We just happen to have another scan tool. Let's see what we can get into now. Oh, there we go. 2010 Chevy Aveo. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yes. Code scan. Yep. So what we come up with. Pre-scan. I have not made repairs yet. We're just gonna go with that. Can you see that? I don't think you can see that. Anyway, it's saying I have not made repairs yet, so we're gonna go with that. Let's see. Analyzing. Mass airflow circuit low frequency. Intake air temperature sensor high. Engine misfire detected generic p0300 so that just means it's generic u0100 lost communication with ecm yeah sounds right because the battery was dead uh, evap system purge control unit u100 uh, ecu performance symptom no cam bus communication transmission sport mode switch circuit to ground well we got a bunch of stuff in here huh Battery low, lost communication. Uh, okay. Left front tire pressure sensor reception fault. Right front tire pressure sensor. Left rear tire pressure sensor. Well, that light's on. You see it on in there. Yep. Okay. Back up. Let's clear all the codes.
we'll see what comes back. Oh, that's from the battery being dead, so we'll clear them all and see what comes back. See what's a hard code. I know that mass airflow. Everything's cleared. All right. Now let's go to engine. See if we can do a live data data display. Engine data. You say data or data? Huh? Okay, here we go. Where's our mass airflow? Right there. Ready? Let me start her up. Mass airflow is plugged in now. I don't want to run right. Just doesn't want to run with that mass airflow plug in. So we can say this following your cylinder number one. This fire cylinder number three. Fire history. Oh, we got a bunch of misfires, huh? Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is put a misfire data. Oh yeah. All of them are misfiring. There'll be an open loop. It's a cold start. Ignition data. There we go. Let's see what this is going to show. No knock detected. That's good. Okay. Well, let's go pull some spark plugs. You want to? All right. All right. Here we go. I'm going to pull some spark plugs. This has a uh, coil pack. Here's our spark plugs. Here's our connector that goes to our coil pack. I already disconnected down. I already took the cover off. So the cover goes here and covers it up. Makes it nice and pretty, but... We don't care about that, so we got to pull the coil pack out. A little Torx bit. Of course, the only one I have that fits is a half inch drive. Ah, whatever. As long as we have one that fits, right? So we have misfires across the board, so hopefully, it's going to be spark plugs, but we'll find out in a minute. Pull those and this whole thing should just pop out. Well, then discontinue. Didn't quite get it on the screw far enough. Ah, there we go. And we have spark plugs down in the wells. See? Mm -hmm. There's our coil pack. This is called a wasted spark system. So, 
what it does is it fires cylinder one and four at the same time. So the cylinders go one, two, three, four. Fire cylinder one and four at the same time. One's on a compression stroke, one's on an exhaust stroke. Does the same thing with two and three. One will be on a compression stroke, one will be on exhaust, on exhaust stroke. And then on the next cycle, the other one will be on the compression stroke, the other one will be on the exhaust stroke, and it flips it. But it fires both of them. So we could either have a bad coil pack, which is possible, but this one doesn't look bad. Doesn't smell bad. It's a little oily, but doesn't look like anything's bent or broken or anything like that. So a connector. Looks like somebody's been in there because there's some dielectric grease. So let's see. Let's get a spark plug wrench. Let's get us a spark plug wrench and we'll pull a spark plug. Guys, keep your tools organized. I try to keep my tools organized, you know, but it doesn't always happen. Let's see if this is going to reach down in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, I forgot the wrench. There we go. You guys have a favorite wrench? I have a favorite wrench. This isn't it. Let's pull a spark plug and see what we got. It was in there pretty tight. Look too bad, but doesn't really look new either. Let's see what we got here. Auto light five two two fours. Not terrible. That's number four. We'll keep that over there. Put them in order so we can tell which one is which. Do another one. There we go. I like this wrench because it has the swivel, see? When you're doing spark plugs like this, it makes it pretty easy. Oh, don't look too bad either. I'll have to check the gap. See what the gap's supposed to be. Number three. This wasn't a really a tutorial video, but huh? don't look bad. Let's have a long start, so we could have a crank sensor or a cam sensor that's going out. Uh oh. Oh, yeah. There we go. Doesn't look bad. Actually, looks like they maybe put some new spark plugs in there. see here. Let's get all our spark plugs out. Not look too bad. Not a little gap about the same. Let's see what our gap is supposed to be. Put them back in, huh? Put down the holes. Not look bad. It's a little carboned up inside there, but nothing looks terrible. Wasn't smoking. That's good, right? Connector looks okay. It'll run. Runs better without the mass airflow sensor hooked up. Have to see what our uh, what our uh, value is supposed to be on that. And we hook it up to our scan tool and let's inspect this real quick. Uh oh, drop the screw. We'll find it. 
looking for arc marks. Lightning strikes down the boots to see if there's any arcing to the cylinder head instead of arcing to the spark plug. It looks good. It actually looks like it's newer. It doesn't have any markings on it that say it's from GM, so I bet you it's an aftermarket. So somebody might have been chasing this problem already. There's one screw. We're going to put that over here in our cover. The other one. See if it hit the floor. I don't see it. Well, we'll have to find that. <laughs> you guys have problems with losing screws? I do. It didn't go down the cylinder. Nope, didn't. Okay, good. We're still good. All right, we'll find that in a minute. Let me go find out. Let's go find out what the gap's supposed to be. And what our value's supposed to be on the uh, mass airflow sensor. And we'll nail this problem down, see what we can come up with. 